Welcome to part two of my Great Guitar Build-Off video series. I've been filming a ton in the process of doing this because there's a lot of different facets of it. And um, I don't want to make one horrendously long video, so here's another one. This is how far I am to date in the process, and I'll catch you at the end. If you remember last week we left off where I had shaped the two body pieces together and I had the basic connections working, but now I need to make the electrical connections work. So I found this old broken clock radio that had this backup battery port in it that had the two parts that I needed to make this happen. Here's my thought for how I can make these two parts of this instrument slide together and then electrically be connected. Each one will function individually, so they'll each have their own quarter inch output jack. But then off of the mandolin, I'm gonna have two additional wires that will run to these terminals on the side of the guitar where the two instruments slide together. Sticking out of the body of the guitar, I think just a couple screws will work as terminals and I'll just have them sticking out a little bit. So as the guitar slides together, these screws will slide into these springy tabs that I just pulled out of an old broken clock radio. And that'll make those electrical connections. Now on the main guitar, then we'll have a toggle switch that'll switch to mandolin. You know, the guys playing the guitar, everything's normal. They only have one extra switch when they slide on the mandolin. Now they can toggle between instruments and the mandolin is automatically on. It doesn't need its own cord. I was just doing a little proof of concept to see if this would work. And you can see here, there's this little light. And um, these screws are on the guitar. They slide into the mandolin and there's our connection. And I made them springy so they'd be nice and tight. If it was just two medical metal plates, they could be a little loosey-goosey, you know. But before I can do any of that, I have to create some cavities so I have access to the wiring that needs to be done, as well as create the contact points in the instrument. I created some shapes in my Vectric software and cut out some templates as well as some cavity covers out of hollow core door and then just proceeded to figure out exactly where I was gonna put these things and route them out. I hogged away the bulk of the material with a giant forstner bit and then used my small quarter inch pattern router bit to clean it all up. Just to make these holes in the, this instrument, I had to make four templates, two for the inner hole, two for the outer hole, right? And each one I am taping on to this in, the instrument, you know, I'm doing the old, uh, two-sided tape that I make myself with super glue because two-sided tape is terrible and you can't trust it. Uh, and uh, it reminds me of why I am a CNC woodworker now and not, and it's not because I can't do it. Like you get a lot of that, people are like, oh, this guy is CNC, this is not a real woodworker and all that. No, it's because real woodworking is very wasteful like this. I'm using way more glue, way more tape, and all this material. Whereas if I program this stuff into the CNC and I strap it down to my machine and I can cut all this stuff with just one set of fasteners and just the little tabs that I use, I'm using way less material. I'm being much more efficient with my time. I'm being more efficient with the material. I'm being more efficient with the consumables. It just makes more sense to me. Uh, not that I mind doing this. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's worth a little tape to make a beautiful work of art. But man, I would sure rather do it without wasting all this stuff. It's always good to step outside of what your usual workflow and comfort zone because um, sometimes you learn some new things and sometimes it reinforces other things that you're doing. So like in this case, it reinforced my approach to making guitars while actually doing it by hand can be faster sometimes. Uh, it's not necessarily the most green or efficient way. Now I also created some other little templates to help me design and make my electrical connection point work. I thought about just using like a guitar jack and a quarter inch receptacle, but because of the angle of the instrument, they wouldn't line up right. If I had designed this to where that angle went straight up at a 90 degree, I could have just used a guitar jack. It would have been really cool looking. Um, but I wanted to make a shape that didn't look like something was missing. And I just, in the design process, ended up with a slope. So made a little more work for myself, but I think we're going to get something unique and kind of cool out of it. Let me see if I can show the camera what's going on here. So the idea is of course that those metal spring plates are in here and then this slides in, but it's not quite working because you can see when I go to slide it in, the head of the screw starts to hit the wood a little bit lower because it actually has to sort of slide up. So I need to route like a little channel right down the middle here so that when, when I'm sliding it in, the screws can go vroop. I made another quick little template and again made a whole bunch more work for myself. This could have just been one 
quick operation, but uh, you know, that's kind of the fun of prototyping and also the frustration of prototyping is sometimes you just have to do things the long and hard way. <laughs> The next time I do something crazy like this, I know to just route a channel out and we'll just put some contacts in and to not get all crazy with the math. All the angles and stuff are strange and whatever. This should work. When I started planning out this build, I was going to just carve this neck by hand on the bandsaw because it had been a little while since I did one that way. But you know what? I am a CNC operator and sticking with my idea of like, you know, why waste time and materials when I don't have to, I decided to just go ahead and create a CNC file. Uh, that's what I do. Hey, if you don't like it, you can go somewhere else. A slight upward angle that I carved in, which gives me a little bit of a gap right there because it's tilting down, but that's okay. I will um, glue it all together. You know, I'll shape this all in. Uh, looking pretty good. You can see I was a little off center somehow in my, uh, my cut. I think that my model was not centered in my file. So that's why this line isn't perfectly centered, but that's okay. And you can see here, we got a little bit of a gap and some chip out from when I glued together those miter saw. And I think this is gonna be okay here too. I have to drill some holes obviously for the tuners. And if this does feel like it's not gonna be safe, I can veneer it with some holocore door, which I might do anyways, and just glue a backing on it, maybe even a front, uh, and then that'll tighten that all up these weird grains and stuff, but so far so good. I think it's okay. I filled in the chipped out areas with a little bit of tinted epoxy and then I epoxied on the fingerboard. I use these bamboo skewers a lot in the shop to, you know, stir things. And uh, sometimes they start to get a little bit too cruddy to use. So you can just simply sort of score it around on all edges and snap it and get a nice clean edge again. Uh, if you just try to break it or cut it, it gets all splintery. But if you do that scoring trick with a razor blade, it stays nice. While the glue dries on this, I can go back to the body and start finishing shaping it all out now that I have all of the cavities cut and everything figured out. I've been using Crimson Guitars Guitar Kit to make this build because I thought that was a requirement of this level of the competition. I found out later that it's not, but I'm still glad that I did it because I love forcing myself to work within constraints and limitations. Um, but regardless of that, that's a whole other story. I wanted to talk about my guitar kits that I make. They are like completely different and almost the opposite of the Crimson Guitar Kits that might interest some of you, depending upon where you are in your tooling and your skill level and your building and whatnot. But one of the questions I get asked all the time is people just don't know where to begin with building guitars and they don't want to get hardware that doesn't work with each other and whatnot. So that's why I created these kits. These are designed for the first time guitar maker to make their first guitar. Although I've had people uh, in other levels enjoy these kits too. And what's great about them is like I've seen even like teenagers with minimal woodworking skill make these really fantastic guitars uh, using just basic handheld tools and they're designed to work with really all you need is a router, a sander, or some hand tools. You know, and uh, along with the kits are access to video tutorials that I created that show you how I made these guitars using this kit using just hand tools. And then there's a second one where I make a bass guitar where I do use some stationary tools like a bandsaw and a router, but all just basic woodworking tools um, and some tips and tricks of how you can do luthier type jobs without the fancy luthier tools. Check them out at newperspectivesmusic.com and also I'll put some video links of uh, the original videos about those kits that are available to the public. But now, back to this kit. Uh, man, I tell you what, it is beautiful. I'm starting to plan out how I'm going to do all the electronics and the crimson kit came with this pre-drilled hole and I cut my shape in and I could put one of these types of things in. You can see it's a little funky. I'll probably have to do some, some chiseling away. But this is something I've always wanted to try. So, you know, on the Strat style input jack, it looks like this. And, uh, you know, you would put a a big hole and, and flush mount that like that. But if you put the, the plug in inside out, I could do this. And I think this guitar, you see, I have to take away a little bit of wood here for the, uh, the electronics because it's not quite flush. Um, but that's no big deal. And I think this guitar, it would actually look pretty cool to have that sort of shape sticking out and put the, the cable in an interesting position. Oops. All right, so we just got to take away some of this material. I 
Well, I'm breaking all the rules. So we got our, our jack plate on inside out and upside down. <laughs> I like that. And then uh, I've got a three-way switch that I'll use for switching between the two pickups, of course. And then the holes that are pre-drilled in this kit are a little bigger than the pots that I usually use. I usually have these mini pots. So I could just, you know, put those in there or buy some other pots, but they're also almost exactly the same size. I could just widen them a little bit for these on-off buttons I, I have here that I've used in the past on instruments and I really like. So it's just like a master on-off and then tone on-off three-way switch and then we'll also have our little toggle switch so it'll go up will be mandolin down will be guitar and then if it's just in guitar mode you can use that as like a uh, 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 you know like kind of a, a momentary kill switch thing and then for the mando we'll just put the jack out and then it'll also have the wires going there of course and um, we'll put a volume knob on this yeah now that I have all the basic stuff you know, figured out. I'm still sort of designing as I go. I want to remove some of the weight from this and uh, make it a little sexier. Uh, this is my original template. The other thing I noticed when I have the neck on is I'm not quite able to reach this top fret, so I need to take a little bit more away here. Um, but before I do that, I don't want to cut out any more MDF and wasted, so I just took this cardboard um, that I cut out and I'm thinking about doing sort of a removal of material like this. So if, if I um, route this area down a little bit and this area down a little bit, uh, so what I'm going to do is I just cut it out on cardboard and I'm going to trace it to my template here and just hand cut this template that I no longer need to my new template. This back section was small enough to just do with my handheld router, but then the front section I couldn't do that way because there was no place for the template to go. So I just glued the template onto the instrument and used my table uh, just to keep me from cutting too far. And that just roughed it out a little bit and then I had to sand it to, to finish. But I was still planning on doing some contouring anyway, so it didn't have to be perfect. I just wanted to have a nice clean edge where the two lines met. Once I had that clean line routed in, I was able to go in with just using palm sanders and some of my Arbortech power carving tools to start contouring the areas that I wanted to be rounded and smooth. I wanted sort of a contrast between these like very angular sharp points and then some sort of rounded smoother things and uh, you know just sort of experimented as I went and made it up as I went along. Once I was happy with the shape and I had it all sanded in, I gave it a little bit of a blast with a torch to bring the darkness of the grain out a little bit and then sanded it one more time before giving it color. I also drilled out those tuner holes and made a couple holocordor veneers to put on the top of the headstock. And once this glue dried, it was time to add some color. Like I said, I have a couple ideas of how I'm going to approach it, but I definitely know I'm going to use green. And I, I know I can put it on the whole thing and I'll be safe. This is a water-based green. It's just green pigments and water. I'm going to get all on here first. I think I wanted to see... Get some more light on it. Finishes are not my strong point. Being this like kind of reclaimed wood guy, uh, I tend to keep the instrument in a fairly rough place, like because I don't want to sand away all of the the reclaimed, you know, character and goodness, and I also don't want to use a lot of um, toxic uh, finishes. Although I know some guys that get some really incredible results with with water-based polyurethane. I originally pictured just doing this in all black and I use this Lockwood's water-based black dye. It's really cool because it makes it dark. You can still see the green. Um, but then I was thinking, well, since this is for the build off, I should maybe push myself and do something a little different. And so then I was thinking about maybe doing like a sunburst of a like a black to green, maybe even to white sunburst to sort of match that fingerboard. Uh, and then I had this idea that I'm gonna try to do green on the lower portion and back and then just make these raised parts in black. So uh, the tricky thing about stain is that it bleeds. It doesn't like to just have a nice straight line. So we're going to see what happens and see if I can get sort of a crisp black top with this green underside. You can always sand it all off if you have to. And these uh, holocord doors are always tough to make look good. I think we'll make these black because the green wasn't looking very good.
Right, I think I'm going to be okay with this color scheme. I'm happy with how this fingerboard ties in with these colors here. I think I want to make um, this headstock black uh, because now the necks just don't look like they tie in yet. And so this one, I'm going to do the headstock black, and then this I think I'll do green, and maybe I'll do the old like violin neck thing where it kind of gets green and then goes in and looks like it's faded out with the hands on, goes green in again there. We just want to not see that transition line like where the brush ended. But I also didn't want to stain the whole thing and then sand it all off again. Thanks for watching and following along and be sure to check out the other guitars being built in the series if you follow the hashtag great guitar build off GGBO um, and you can go to their website and see who's doing what, figure out who's in the contest. It's a blast, it's all for charity and again proceeds will go partially to Crimson Guitars charities to get people making guitars and part will go to the Arbor Day Foundation which is the charity I'm donating my money to. When this instrument is done at the end of May it will go up for auction sometime in June on eBay and everybody will be able to bid on it and uh, all that money will go to these great charities. So thanks a lot Crimson Guitars for starting this and everybody for playing along and for inviting me to play along. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot and be good. Did I leave yet?